There I was, a Monday evening, sitting on my stream eagerly waiting for the new Strive character to be revealed. Slayer. Johnny. Jam. I've been asking for them since the literal start of the game, since the first DLC dropped in Guilty Gear Strive. Surely it has to be one of them now. It has to be. I said a little prayer under my breath, hoping whatever deity out there was listening to me. I sat and waited to see who it was. I'll say sorry in advance. God is dead. I tell you, dude, this is, what, the seventh DLC character? And once again, it's a character that I didn't want personally. Arxis, you can't just keep adding characters because they show up in the story. Like, yeah, okay, you have the model for them. Cool. But you decide who gets in the game and who doesn't, which means you can add whoever you want. You've already done it with Testament and Bridget. Why the fuck do we have to have Sin just because he had a model? I'm annoyed. Ah, well, it is what it is. All I can do now is wait until he drops and see how good he is. God, this IGN stream is not doing a good job of selling him. I'm not looking forward to this, honestly. Well, I guess it's just another wasted character slot. There's always next character, I guess. They made him fun? Oxus, what the fuck? This is not what I expected. Like, this is really, really not what I expected. We need to talk about this. So let's do that. Let's talk about Sin Kisk. Sin is a character that was released in Guilty Gear Overture, which is a game that I definitely know how to play. I am a MOBA player. I definitely know what I'm doing. After the magnificent success of Overture, he was a shoo-in for the base roster of Guilty Gear Exarch. In that game, he was a mid-range monster who was able to confirm his great pokes into intense combos and damage with his ability to cancel his special moves into each other, meaning he also had the safest DP in the game. However, he has a bar known as his calorie gauge, which he taps into when cancelling his special moves. Run out of calories and you enter a state where you can't do anything because Sin is battling the hardest thing a person could ever go through in the world. A tummy ache. Despite this unique mechanic, he's one of the easiest characters to play in XR due to his godlike neutral and easy confirms. His mix-ups aren't too bad either. So what's he like in Strive? Oh. Well, this is a surprise. While Sin still has a few good confirms and long pokes, his range potential is nowhere near as good as it was back in Exarch. Now having more ways to get around the opponent's offense than having ways to set up a barricade and bunker down like he did in Exarch. He retrains his beak driver, but it has much less of a bite than it did in Exarch. Now having a follow-up that puts him right in the opponent's face rather than hitting them over and over again from a safe distance. He's also able to dash cancel it as a follow-up in order to get in his opponent's face. Now, you may be looking at this and wondering if he can cancel it into any other special move, and my answer to that is, ah, 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 no, that's an aggo shtick. Instead, he gets premeditated follow-ups for each of his special moves, which drain a bit of the resource of this bar known as his stamina bar. He can still eat. Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, you want to know how eating affects the stamina bar? Of course. Well, I'm proud to tell you that it doesn't.
No, in fact, the food in this game has a very special function. It's actually a gotcha pole. You can have one of five effects happen while eating food. These are restoring your HP, gaining tension, increasing damage for a certain amount of time, reducing incoming damage for a certain amount of time, and a speed buff for a certain amount of time. Now, all that sounds pretty useful on paper. Who doesn't want more damage on their attacks, am I right? But there's more to it than this. Each of these effects have different levels to them, which affects the values that you get from each of them. There's five levels, with level 1 being the most common and weakest, and level 5 being the rarest but most powerful. With the tension and HP gain, they're a flat rate, but for the buffs, not only is the size of the buff affected by the roll, but the duration is also affected by a different roll, meaning you can get the max buff and have it last only 2 seconds. And since food takes 49 frames to recover and the buff is activated on the 36th frame, it means that if you get the 2 second buff, you lose 1 20th of the buff just waiting for Sin to finish eating his fucking food. Basically, food is way too complicated, way too risky, and very annoying to use. Only use it on a 2k 2d knockdown or when you stick to a wall with a normal move if you really want to spin the gotcha. The rest of his moves, thankfully, aren't useless. In fact, overall, they're pretty good. We've already been over Beak Driver, which is good for mid-screen confirms and getting in on your opponent to start your pressure, but we've got three other tools that he's able to use in order to run an extremely effective pressure game, and an extremely high damaging combo game. His 236k is Elk Hunt. While some of you may be seeing this and having panic attacks because of how similar it looks to Scum Dipper, its activation time is much longer. Hell, it's even reactable. This move sends Sin about three quarter lengths of the screen and has a low profile property, meaning it's a good approach tool. It also allows you to cancel into a plus on block follow up which perfectly spaces the enemy away for a 2S to connect for your pressure to loop into itself. Of course, if they faultless defense the follow-up, it causes them to be too far away for any normal to connect. This special move is generally a good way to finish your combos for reasons that we'll touch upon a little bit later. His 214S is Hoof Stomp, a reliably fast overhead that also low crushes. At 21 frames of startup, this overhead is barely reactable, so it's a good way to open up your opponent's defense when they're not looking for it. The follow-up attack, however, is negative on block. However, it pushes you a fair distance away, making it hard to punish Sin on block. With Mita, this option becomes extremely deadly, as you can transfer it into a roam and cancel for a lot of damage, making it an extremely good pressure tool. It is also used as a combo extender, as cancelling it into dash after connecting the attack allows you to continue your combo and gain a lot of distance. His final special move is Hawk Baker, which is his dedicated reversal tool. It's a dragon punch with two hits on the way up and the way down. This move can be easily interrupted if the opponent blocks the first attack as there is a large gap between the two attacks, allowing aware players to get really, really big punishes on him for not connecting the move. If both of the moves are blocked, he is extremely negative, like most Dragon Punches. However, he has another Strike Invulnerable follow-up right after, which means that you can punish people for trying to punish you or force them to respect your options. You can also dash cancel this on block as well. We should probably talk about that dash, huh? So dash isn't like how dash cancels normally work in Strive, where you kick up some dust and flames behind you and run towards your opponent for a set distance. It's actually a special cancel he has on all of his special moves. It technically is a special move in itself, and it's called Gazelle Stamp. At 24 frames, it's reactable if you're looking for it, but it can be stuffed pretty easily. If you don't stop him though, Sin gains a large amount of ground on his opponent and is able to begin his pressure game really easily as it puts him basically directly in your face from any special move. Every follow-up for every special move costs one chunk of stamina gauge. After being used, the stamina gauge will sit idly for a while before slowly refilling over time as long as Sin doesn't use any more follow-ups. There is no downside for the stamina gauge hitting zero like the calorie gauge did in XR, so feel free to deplete the whole thing. Just know that you won't be able to use any follow-up moves until you have at least one segment of the bar back. This system is nowhere near as punishing as it was back in Exard, where you would become a free combo in that game if you cancelled into your special moves too much. Again, that's Nago's thing now. But you still do need to be actively aware of how much stamina you have at any given time. 
Using the cancel to get frame advantage and damaging combos is a large part of Sin's game plan. And if you have no way to cover yourself, you can find yourself in some pretty bad situations. But it's just so fun to use the cancels. Using a follow-up and then going into the gazelle skip not only skips most of neutral, but it also puts you in your preferred range, and it feels really sick to pull off. But it also costs two-thirds of the stamina gauge, and that will take a while to fill back up, meaning you have to decide if you want to hoard the final stamina piece in case you need it, or you can use it to get more damage or pressure. And trust me, it's very easy to get ahead of yourself and accidentally cash out all of your stamina gauge when you didn't need to. There will be times where you find yourself in a position where you need some stamina, but you wasted it all and you're kind of fucked because of that. The designers were able to take what made Sin interesting and unique in Exard and turn it into something more fitting for the character and, in my opinion, something more fun to play. Sin's a dumb kid. He gets ahead of himself all of the time. It's normal for him to jump to conclusions and rush in blindly and find himself in situations he's not able to deal with. And the designers have managed to take that aspect of the character and literally apply it to the gameplay. Sin's always ready to go in, but it's on you, the player, to reel him in and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. Finally, we should go over Sin's supers, and honestly, they're all pretty basic. His GG input super is RTL. This is similar to Kai's Ride the Lightning, however, you're able to change the direction after connecting one hit, allowing for insane corner carry and even setups that let you put the opponent behind you. If you also have any bar left over, you can spend it to do another hit, which does more damage depending on how much more meter you put into it. His double quarter circle forward punch is Tyrant Barrel. This is a two hit super, and the second one has to be timed manually. The damage on the second hit is actually dependent of when you hit the opponent with it. This has a scale, however, the most damaging option is known as a clean hit, which has a one frame window for you to connect with it, and it does a bunch of damage. Landing the cleaner is honestly the closest we'll probably get to getting Sidewinder combos back, and while that does make me a bit sad, god damn does it feel good to connect. While RTL is pretty easy to connect into, Tyrant Barrel isn't as easy, but there are techniques that you're able to do, like Kara cancelling a follow-up into Tyrant Barrel. But this isn't a guide, so you're just gonna have to go somewhere else to figure that stuff out. But there's something pretty big that we didn't address about the character, and that's that new Sin and old Sin feel completely different. Now, I need to admit, I've not played much of Exard Sin. It's my contractual obligation to play Soul, Jam, Johnny, or Slayer in any old Gilly Gear game, and Sin and Exard just kind of seem pretty boring. Mid-range zoning, focusing on space control and whiff punishing, what is this fucking Street Fighter? So I just ignored him and decided that he was boring. But for new Sin, this character's cool. Like, really cool. Neutral doesn't feel like his best range because most of his normals were nerfed in range and recovery. It feels like you want to get past neutral and get in with your character to run your offense. It feels like the homework you gotta do before you get to watch your favorite show or the laundry that you gotta wash before you can go on a night out. Do your fucking laundry. But it does feel like there was something lost in the conversion. I'm not the best person to figure out what that was because, again, not an Exxon player, but it seems like a lot of old-time Sin players are enjoying the character despite the drastic changes that they made to him. But still, it is very weird just how a character was lost and how it feels like we got somebody completely new. But if you ask me, new Sin's so much cooler than old Sin, so... Who really cares? Don't believe me? Well, come over to the Twitch and argue with me about it. I'm going to be showing off some stuff I learned with him for the past week and a bit, so come say hi. Should be a good time. And if not, you are nitpicking and bias. I win. Bye-bye. Once again, a very special thanks to 64 Megahertz, Brudakai, Daniel Wiederich, Games.png, Lady Dantelon, Maki Yamazaki, Melodically Me, Monax, Proxy, Super, Straw Fox, and Tom Tanks for being tier 2 patron supporters.